Hey, what? Did I join here? So, 40 days. Is that what you said? <laughs> what were you saying? This is day 40? Oh, jeez. Okay, this is day 40 of the shutdown, um, which is crazy. So, did you guys ever see that? 40 days, 40 nights. That is, like, the most ridiculous movie with Josh Hartnett. Do you guys remember that one? Because you should never go without any kind of like sex or masturbation for 40 days. The people recommend that like in some religions. That's a terrible idea because sexuality is your core being and if you do that you're going to become very depressed and very angry. When you repress your sexuality you get angry and if you go 40 days without releasing your sexuality you're going to be really pissed off <laughs> and you're going to be depressed and it's not going to be good so if you're holding out through all this quarantine not a good idea um because th people are like so scared of sex but that's your core that's who you are sexuality is your core being um we are all about like Everything in life is about experiencing love, really. And love is sexuality. It's all the same thing. Um, y when you fall in love with someone, you're sexually attracted to them. You know, like, even if you didn't maybe first, like, maybe someone you didn't find them attractive at first, but then you become attracted to them. That's all their sexuality. So sexuality is not just sex. Like, it's everything. It's someone's whole being. You know, how they carry themselves. They're, they're, um, and just everything, you know, and their character and stuff. That's all sexuality. People think when you're talking about sexuality, you're just talking about sex, or just the act of sex. No, it's everything. It's, you know, getting to express yourself, being free, wearing what you want. All these things are expressions. Dancing. You know, um, but it, it's funny our society is so against sex, which is what we we need to be more open. We need to be able to express ourselves, dance, love, live, be alive. Oh, is that not plugged in? Oh, is it still working? Okay, Jarvis is messing up. I wasn't sure if it was working. So, anyways, forty days. Here's the big thing today. Um, we're finding out that people. They're saying, you know, of course, that everyone knew in January that, like, Trump knew about this virus and no one did anything about it. That's the big debate. Well, I think that is true. And here's the thing. If that's true, well, then all of the government officials knew in January. Um, so that would show that Governor Sisolak knew as well. And they did things here, which we found very odd, like naming the Raiders on January 22nd, way before they were supposed to. So the big rumor now is Lola that... Says, Hi, nice to see you. You look cute. Look at, I like your outfit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so the big thing today is uh, people were saying that CES maybe made this virus spread more. like Because, you know, CES is one of the biggest conventions here in Vegas, and people come from all over the world. It's the Consumer Electronics Show. If you don't know what that means, it's every year in January in Las Vegas. It's the biggest convention we have. And me and Jai Rich have gotten a couple years. It's pretty fun. It's just all the new things coming out, the new TVs, all the electronics stuff, the new cars, all kinds of uh, gizmos and gadgets there. And uh, they're saying, oh, that's probably, you know, we got this virus spreading here or whatever. Well, here's the funny thing, you guys. The numbers are coming out, and this is a regular flu virus. Only, like, 50,000 people have died. I, maybe the number's a little more now. You know, oh, no, it's 60,000, whatever. You know, it's in that range. Um, and that's the regular flu virus numbers. Every year, every single year, around 50,000 people die from the flu when it comes around. Well, we're finding out that this coronavirus came around in November, December, January. People got it, didn't think anything of it, now have an immunity. And in January, it was starting to get rumored in China about it and all this stuff. And then, oh, uh, you know, and then people were giving uh, shit to Trump for him not doing anything about it. And now in, what, March, they shut down everything for this virus that a lot of people already had an immunity to, they're finding out, because it was the regular flu virus. The regular flu virus. Oh, this one doesn't have a cure. No virus has a cure. Yolo went and watched a bunch of your 
YouTube videos. Who did? Uh, the person, this, this YOLO. YOLO? Thank you. And thank you. they said they're great. Yes, thank you guys. If you could just subscribe. Oh, thank you. If you could subscribe over there, that's awesome. Uh, we're, we're trying to get a thousand because that's, you know, it's just cool. But um, so we're kind of in YouTube, you're kind of more established over there. So Jerry just keeps telling me, say, don't say that because people are mean. They'll go unsubscribe. But you guys don't do that. Don't be mean. We're just, she's Louise. It's hard work trying to get this. We've been working for a long time trying to get it. And people are so mean. It's like the second they, like, who cares? if we could do a thousand you know but oh man don't like it. like we noticed once we were getting close we started losing subscribers like crazy right. and the thing is that, that we actually about the what we realized about the about a lot of environments is we've tried to work with the other YouTube bloggers but they're so like jealous yeah they're jealous and people say oh we ain't jealous of you it's not this was the thing it's not that you're jealous of what someone has or what they do whatever it's people get jealous when other people are happy and that's the bottom line. And then they'll say, oh, I'm not jealous of that person because, look, uh, they don't even have this or they don't have that. or that. But the person's happy and people don't like that. And you go, oh, that's not true. How often when someone is having fun, laughing, dancing, jumping around, people say, be quiet, stop that, mind your manners. Because they just, I don't know, they want a completely quiet society. Our neighbors next door, we had another thing. Remember, I was just telling you guys about that. We had to tell them what's up a couple weeks ago. And you gotta put him in their place. Put him in their place. He last night tried to pull some shit on us, um, because he said Jarvis was playing his guitar. You guys, his his acoustic. acoustic guitar. Can you tell me how loud an acoustic guitar is in the house? It's not. If you don't know, electric is what. I was asleep. I didn't even hear it. I didn't even know what happened. And that guy said he was gonna call security. He comes out from next door. Comes out from next door. Could I come over here and knock on the door. So he's gonna call security. And Jarvis like, oh really? Because the one day last time. When we went over there, he pushed Jedi Rich, and we have it on film. You can't see the push, but you can. He was filming him, gets pushed, you hear everything going on. So he's like, Oh, really? You do that? I'm gonna say assault. Remember that? So the guy, of course, he's, just, he's like, I don't know what his deal is. He lives like these two old ladies. I don't know if it's his mom and grandma or what, because all he does is play video games. The guy is like probably close to 40 years old, but he's living with like a 60 and 90 year old lady, it looks like, and he plays video games. <laughs> And we're like, and and then he comes and yells at us for playing acoustic guitar, and he screams while he plays his video games, cause he's like one of those gamers, so he's like yelling at the top of his lungs. You can always hear them. We never say a thing, and they have the audacity to come over here. So we just said, fine, do that. We'll call the authorities and for assault for you. And they shut their ass up. They don't won't bother us again. Cause he pushed Jerry Rich the time we went over there to talk to him because they got all, eh, they're, they're, they're nasty people. We had a lot of nasty people. Around. There's a lot of cool people, too. Oh, but. that's a good point. You know, that, that's a very interesting demographic about Vegas. Yeah. People that come to Vegas, they experience the Strip with a bunch of international people. Right, that are really cool. So when you have the Strip open, you experience so many cool people. You meet people from all over the world. It's so much fun. So I really miss it because that's my job. I get to meet people, and it's amazing. Right now... I'm only meeting locals, which is a, a new, a new level I've not experienced yet of some people of just the lack of respect for other people. I mean, well, well, well a lot of people that move here are racist. Very racist. They're, 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 they're very and similar. very chauvinistic. Um, very. Uh, I am shocked by some of the things I receive. Of course, I don't see these people, but just the messages I receive. Well, like, what about the people just that that, that text uh, like 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 that live here that text us on Twitter? Mm -hmm. Just nasty, nasty, mean and nasty. I we were shocked by the stuff that we got from, especially when we made the Raiders um, theme song. We were really excited about it. We changed. It was an Ice Cube song that was the Oakland Raiders, and we got really excited. We made it the Vegas Raiders. We we made all these cool videos. We learned it. We go all the time in front of the stadium and make us. And all people do is just say the nastiest stuff to us. They say, "Go away, stop." They call me a whore. They call us crackheads. They call us meth. Heads. They call me too thin. They say, uh, "You don't belong in Raider Nation. Get the fuck out of here. Get you piece of shit." Like all. That's all we get. All we get. We don't even get a positive comment really from the Raiders thing at all from anyone locally. Like we can't even get a heart from them. I mean, there maybe there's a couple. Of, there's probably a couple of our people. Sorry if I like like Lenny Lenny Las Vegas. Thank you. Uh, you you've you've hearted some stuff. But we're talking about like the bigger people when we send it to like like media outlets where like the you know like the local like 
little celebs, you know, the little guys. Not We're like Yolo some good vibes right now. You know, and um April 26th, 2020, CE Planet Earth Las Vegas, Nevada. Current time, 04 and 47 minutes. Forrest, let's tag that YOLO. Thank you. Center of most positive vibes. Any negative energy she has on her, any negative thoughts, convert those to positive thoughts and positive energy throughout the day. And let's reward everybody massively and abundantly, especially YOLO. <laughs> Yellow's gonna get massive rewards throughout the day today. So oh, thank you. Yellow, for your hours, positive vibes. Forty-seven See, minutes. Because it's so rare to get a positive feedback from anybody. Yes. So thank you. That's my so point. The so the universe is gonna reward you. So we today. make all of this art, and you guys, we don't make any money. We've never made a dime on our art. Style is dope as shit. Oh, thank you. We've never made a dime on our art, and we've been doing it for three years, and we just do it every day. And posting we, it for three years. We posting for three years. Well. Yeah, well, you know, but we're posting solid every day. We post on so many platforms. We're mainly on Twitter. So that's our big thing. But we have Jennifer.com as our website um, that we post there all the time. But then for social media outlets, the main one we post on is Twitter and YouTube. Um, but we've been doing it for three solid years. We we make so many videos. We sing. We dance. We you know we make all these things. Jairus does so much editing, and we can't even get a heart from people. And then we get like ten views on Twitter for th something that we spent like weeks making. Right. Sometimes the worst part is that we send it, and then we say, "Hey guys, you know we made this thing. Can you give a little support for like anyone, anyway, like the local celebs, or even us, just someone not even our a followers. celeb, our like our own followers? Five hundred thousand followers. We have like you know zero hearts from any of our followers." to save Vegas. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're talking about Vegas Raiders. Great. People don't like the Raiders. We get it. So then we did the Fight for Your Right to Party with the Seuss is like. We also did We Care a Lot about Vegas. That one has nothing. And what we did was we would tweet people and we'd at people nothing. and we'd say, do you want to save Vegas? And the, and the local bloggers will tweet anything that if you say, hey man, I hate my paper straws or, or if you got a grasshopper. But when it came to saving Vegas, None of them wanted to support us because they knew you were a female and that I support. Right, and most of the comments I got were, uh, like when I sang the song, was that I didn't have a right to sing the song because I was a female. Most of the comments um, from the Raiders was that I didn't have any right to sing the Raiders song. Which we say, I mean, I don't even know what their deal is. It's like, it's not the NFL's national song. I, I mean, that'd be fantastic. It's, I decided to sing a song. Why can't I sing a Raiders song? Why don't I have a right to sing a Raiders song? Who the fuck gives them the right to tell other people they don't have a right to sing a song? And they said, oh, get the fuck out of here, you bunch of meth head, crackheads, uh, whores, and pimps, and hoes, and all kinds of shit they call the us. The nastiest thing. They, the, they ran polls on seeing They ran polls on, uh, uh, if you would, you. no, to gang rape me, and they ran polls on if you would um, rather die or fuck Jedi Joy, um, and most people said die, and they said things like, um, yeah, like the gang rape thing, who wants to gang rape me, all kinds of stuff. They did these polls. All of it, all kinds of stuff. They um, they said stuff to my uh, work profile, which hurts my business. They had an attempt to hurt your business. They had an attempt they to hurt my business. Expose you to everybody. Yeah, ex I mean, all shame kinds you, of stuff. Slut shame you. Slut sh all kinds of just because we sing a song, and we try to get support for people so saying, "Hey, go, go go Vegas Raiders, go Vegas anything." We care a lot about Vegas anything. Nobody. And they say. Even if we sing another song, they're like, oh, not this, not this crackhead again, not this whore, not this bitch, not this cunt, all kinds of things. Any nasty s s word you could think of, like a man would say to a woman, I've gotten it on, right. on Twitter and, all and, to do, and well, YouTube. Here's, here's why they, they, here's, and Periscope. Here's why matter. Las Vegas does that. Because, see, Las Vegas is, is, is racist, so they all have to believe the same thing. Everyone here hates the casinos. Everyone wants them shut down. Of course, we're like, that doesn't make sense. We're always exposing the truth. That's why they don't want the hard stuff, because we expose the truth, and they want to uphold the lies. Right, and um, we're always say, you know, talking about things that are really happening, and they act like nothing ever happens in Vegas in the sense of, like, negative. It's like, like when the people died here. We were like, hey, 58 people just died in Vegas, and they don't want to talk about it because it's, like, unattractive. They might uh, lose a little business. It was like, oh, because we were making, like, things about, you know, uh, like Vegas strong and stuff and they, they hearted it for the first month right, Dana after was, that they were like no more don't talk about it again get the tourists back and don't ever exactly. bring up the Mandalay Bay incident bite. again that was the new local news media here and this is where, where we started going what the hell's wrong with these people yeah it was like don't ever bring up that shooting Dana again Roselli, don't ever talk about it after Dana the first Roselli like month or two are the big, Dana Roselli and Sean McAllister were the biggest violators of that they were like 
Oh, everything is so wonderful here in Vegas. Everything was terrible that after that, you so guys. Was that got it fired. was horrible here in Vegas, and they act like it was like business went down the toilet. So many things closed. People were scared. It was really, really bad. It was sad. It was not good to be here, and they acted like oh. Everything's fine, and they've been acting like that all along, and things were finally starting to recover just in March. We were starting to see, wow, Vegas is... And then fucking dumb fuck Steve Sislek shut down everything on um, St. Paddy's Day. I was at the casino. We were at Caesars Palace on St. Paddy's Day as they shut down everything. And it was the dumbest thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. And it was for a regular flu virus. And they have destroyed Vegas. They're talking about the the news is finally starting to, at least Rick Vallada, I saw him write an article, finally starting to be like, oh, we're talking to people that realize they will never have a job to go back to. Yeah, hello? You're just now realizing that? The casinos are not going to just open and we're going to have filled casinos whenever Governor Sislek decides to allow them to open. They're going to open one of them maybe at a time and they're going to be trickle business back and some of them will never open again and most of them will change hands before they open again they're going to be sold to new owners so then they'll open whenever that happens what happened, you know? we just found out was that the virus was most likely here in Vegas during CES because yeah, all the Chinese yeah no that's what I so I was saying so CES is so they already had the virus here so that means that the people here already have an immunity we had it probably you we said. probably had it we we had a a, a, um, a little sickness Anyways, in November you know we didn't think people, nothing right. of it the point is, is that it was here people got you know whatever and it you guys it's a regular flu virus that people are recovering from and 50,000 people is who regularly die from the flu virus so I am so tired of hearing this hysteria over 50,000 people I'm sorry but we lose those people every year to the flu virus and I've lost loved ones they say oh you don't have a heart my mother committed suicide when I was 20 years old I know what it's like to lose a loved one but this is ridiculous what we are doing and my brother died two years after that in a motorcycle accident. I've lost him. I don't even have barely any living grandparents. Most of them are dead. So it's like this concept of that, well, how dare you? Because some people lost their 90-year-old grandma on, and she was been in the hospital, and we couldn't even see her. How long has she been in the hospital? It's the people that were already sick, you guys, you that are dying. And this is ridiculous. And I do have a heart, and it does suck to lose a loved one, but we cannot shut down the world for you losing your old grandma that was already sick. It's not even your grandma that's healthy. It's the ones that were already sick. Or if it's a young person it's the one that had a very very poor immunity and already had a sickness or illness hey quinn hey quinn hey quinn quinn better is out there tell, trying to tell people that that you should be taken down that fifty thousand people have died from this in one month <laughs> see that's the fake news they're hearing it's not in one month you guys this is over the whole time are you kidding me they're finding out that it's been since november and those are the numbers they're using it's not in one month. I don't even... That's just... That that's is just fake news. Lo- a lot. Remember, but that same person said, you should be taken down for spreading in misinformation, told everybody that 50,000 people died from the virus in one month, which is absolutely false. It's not true. 50,000 died total. 50,000 died total. You guys, not in one month. Over this whole thing. They're tracking... Tom Hanks the and whole Wilson thing. lived. Yeah. And you guys, it's already been over a month that we've been doing this. This is day 40. And those are the numbers is what they're tracking is ever since they've known about the coronavirus, which has been... Now now they're realizing since November. So there's still the numbers are tracking. They can go back and check all these numbers and figure out well, who had it. I mean, yeah, who's because, dying is the unhealthy because Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson live. Yeah. Just like anybody who would die from a normal common cold would die from this. If you say that a 45-year-old died from this virus, they're probably a drinker, smoker, or overweight. Because they already know who dies from flu viruses because that happens. So all they could have figured out, all they didn't know is the coronavirus. They can go back and see who in the last since November has died from the flu virus and the pretty good chance it was the coronavirus and those numbers are still only 50,000 you dumb fucks not just this month my god don't listen to people that just throw out numbers that aren't even real i am going off of the stats that are all over the fucking internet saying 50,000 over the whole time you guys not over a month i mean just really wake up and i'm sorry but you all I'm not actually not sorry for saying this, but anyone with a face mask on is the dumbest fucking person on the planet right now. 
if you're still wearing that face mask after what's going on and you haven't figured out this is a regular flu virus, you need to take it off because you're losing oxygen to your brain and you are not thinking straight. And we're seeing people take off their face mask to smoke a cigarette. Are you kidding me? You're so worried about your health? Or take it off to have a drink of alcohol? If you guys lost your minds? I mean, I saw this couple at Walmart. I gotta go to Walmart today, speaking up, so this is always so a good... Saying this person, NCA, everyone, stay quarantined, put your masks on, and wash your hands. Okay, washing your hands is stupid, too, because all that does is get rid of your good bacteria. Uh, washing your hands does not stop a virus. It will never stop a virus. What you do is you take all of the good bacteria that helps you fight a virus off of your hands. Bacteria is not what causes viruses. They're different things. And antibiotics cure bacteria. Antibiotics cannot cure viruses. There are no cure for viruses. How you cure a virus is you get it and you get over it and now you're immune to it. <laughs> That's what's happening. Everyone that had the coronavirus is now immune to it if they got better, which is hundreds of thousands of people. That's their cure. They got it, they got sick, Harvard's and now they're better. Harvard's a joke, just so you guys know. It's over. Harvard is a joke. Haven't you guys realized that uh, they found out that all of the celebs and people with money are paying to get their kids into all of these institutions? So there is not any level of being smart or not. It's how much money you have. So it means nothing to have a Harvard degree anymore, because all that meant is you had rich parents that paid for you to get in there. And they're finding they're actually people are going to prison over this. They had that Lori Laughlin or whatever. She got in big trouble. The one from Full House. Remember her? And then that Felicity Huffman, uh, they got in a lot of trouble, these uh, celebs, because they paid off the schools to get their kids in there, and they're finding out that's happening all the time. So take your Harvard degree and shove it up your fat ass because it means nothing. There's every day at all giant stadiums convening and interacting with each other where there's the virus. Four of them have got the virus. They recovered. They're back at work. If it was really that deadly, don't you think they would have shut down our giant yep. stadium? And you guys, they use your brain, guys. Look around. There are certain yeah. things that are still operating because they and they want work the money. in close quarters. I keep hearing, oh, they allow construction because they don't know. Have you been to the Al Giant Stadium? Those guys work very close together. Yeah, four, six, eight together, right? And then there. they <laughs> just like last week started kind of enforcing. Oh, let's kind of act like we're six feet apart. But they only do that when you have the cameras out. As soon as like when you first walk up, they're all. Oh, together. Yeah, all and then as soon as you take your camera out, they're all, oh, they start separating. But they're all together chatting to go to the same food, food cart. If the food so cart brings the same to all the guys. They all together. The toilets, the porta potties, they get in lines for the porta potties. No six feet. We saw when they leave, when they leave, they huddle because they have to go out this gate. Herds of them going out this gate all at the same time. No six feet. Mm -mm. And they just started, some of them wearing face masks. They didn't have face masks all this time. Four of them got the virus on the site. They didn't close it down. They didn't Someone do anything. Said the Wuhan virus they're already back to work. Someone said the Wuhan virus was out. Yeah, it was. No, they're finding out the numbers were uh, totally blown out of proportion. So here's the thing. There is a virus. There is a virus. That's all there is. But it was a regular flu virus. This hysteria that it was going to kill everyone and that you need to wear face masks and that you need to quarantine and that you need to stay at home and you need to shut down all essential, non-essential business. Who decides this, essential or non-essential? Fuck the government for saying one person's business is more important than another's. That's just rude. Um, especially when they say construction's allowed. You can say, oh, well, they only did things like healthcare. Oh, really? What did construction have to do with our health? Yeah, why, why is it so important we have an NFL stadium? Yeah, why, why, if, 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 if we're all about to die, yeah, if, why do we need an NFL stadium? Yeah, why do we need new me. buildings if Absolutely. we're about to die? Why do we need the resort world to keep building? I saw they just finished all of their glass because they got to work the entire time. Why do we need that if the whole world is about to die from an epidemic? Tell me that. Riddle me that, Governor Sislik. Right, all these guys who say it's so deadly... Are the Democrats, too. If you guys, I'm not political, but if you notice, the ones that are making the biggest stink are these Democratic governors. And the biggest reason is because they don't want Trump to become president again. So they're doing any means. They already tried to impeach him. Uh, then that didn't work. And that, man, we act like, do you know how awkward it would be if you just tried to get your boss fired?
fired and then now you got to go back to work under him as all these governors do so we kind of seem to forget that just happened now all of a sudden Trump in the beginning was saying this was a hoax from China, which it was. Now the Dems go, oh no, it's not Trump. Oh no, it's not. Because they want to make him look bad because they just tried to impeach him. And here's the big deal. You go, oh, they wouldn't do that. Oh, really? Oh, really? Because they will do anything to get into the office that they want. These people do anything as politicians. They trample on people. They do not care when they get there. And you have to to become a politician. We know that you got to just, you got to just devour the other uh, people and, you know, know, like say nasty stuff. And that's how you get to the top with these politicians. So we know they're not good people right there. We see how they treat each other. Those are, they all know each other. Do they go to the same wedding parties and stuff with Trump and the Clintons and all of them? Obama, all of them went to the same things. Same with Putin. If you look online, Putin has met with all of our last four or five presidents so many times. I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, they're just all best of buddies with Putin. We act like we're not. I'm like, it was photo after photo of Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump. That's my song. Clinton, Bush, Obama, and Trump. Clinton, Bush, Obama. Remember, Jared? Yeah. Clinton, Bush, Obama, and Trump. I did a president song. We see, we do all kinds of fun stuff, and no one ever... We get a couple of people. We have thank you. We have some supportive people on Twitter. A couple, but for the most part, it's just nasty stuff, and and not a heart, no support. And we just make fun videos. It's like all we're doing is creating art. I don't understand why people are so nasty about art. We're not asking for money. We're not asking uh, for really anyone to do anything than heart or retweet or anything. Comment something nice. Do something when you see someone do something nice for the place you live or something you care about if you care about Vegas. This is, some people would say, oh, I don't care about Vegas. Well, this is the adult playground, and if that doesn't exist, that's going to be very bad for people because people need an outlet. People need to go for bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, 21 birthday parties, um, 40th birthday parties. I mean, people come here for every birthday, every year. It's funny. I often have people say, oh, it's my birthday. Like, it's a big deal, you know? Yeah, that's great, but you're like, do you know how many people's birthday it is on any given day in Vegas when it's uh, opening? Because most people are coming for their birthday. It's funny. So you're like, oh, that's great. So they want free stuff all the time for people, but like so many people are there on their birthday. So it makes it difficult because like they go, oh, it's my birthday. And it really is their birthday because that's what they came to Vegas for, you know. It's not where they're lying. But um, I hope... We have that again. I hope it opens back up and people come on their birthdays again. And that's why we're making all of these songs and doing all this stuff. And we just enjoy it. And we enjoy it. We want people to smile and laugh and enjoy and laugh at our videos. Uh, but instead, all like people are just so nasty and negative. And it's, it's just unfortunate because it doesn't matter about our videos. But that's how they live their daily life, if that makes sense. So, like... With that's what they're saying on our videos, that's what they're saying on the inside of themselves, too. Because you project how you feel on the inside on other people. So, if you're a positive person, you're going to project positivity on the people and you're going to say positive things. Like when I go on Twitter, all I want to do is find the cool stuff and retweet stuff. Right now, I'm a little angry, so I am saying things about the current climate of the government. Right now is an exception because this is insane what's going on. But generally on social media I'm about positivity of finding the funny stuff saying funny things telling people how great their videos are I I, I did that for the longest time then I just got irritated because it was like forget it you know it's just after a while if just negative 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 and you're the only one being positive it starts to be draining it does really start to be draining it really does, it really does. Jedi Rich got like really depressed the other day and he never gets depressed and just because it was just like, you know, we work so hard. We, we want to just make people smile and laugh. I mean, we're like stoners over here just making funny shit. And people are like, get the fuck out of here. That's horrible. Like, it was supposed to be funny. It was just supposed to make you laugh. It wasn't supposed to make you angry and nasty. Or like, like when it's ridiculous stuff half the time we're doing. You know, it's like nuts. Like, they'll be like, oh, oh I had someone say, 
who you think you are, Barbra Streisand, when I was singing, I was like, just the fact that you put me in the same sentence as Barbra Streisand is a compliment, because I am in no way a singer, so thank you for even putting her name next to mine, because... I was bulimic for 15 years. I did lost my voice. I sing now for fun and to um, try to heal my voice, and I just love it. I in no way I'm trying out for American Idol next year or something like that. You know what I mean? I live in reality, but people think just because I put out a video in my house that I think I'm the next whatever. You know? I'm like. I'm just having fun. This is fun. We made this studio in our place, and we enjoy it, and we have a blast, and we want other people to enjoy it. Because why not? So I just went on TikTok yesterday, and at first I just was having a blast. I didn't really understand the app. <laughs> I just thought you just lip sing, and I thought, what a great app for me. Lip singing is what I love, and singing all this is just going to be the best thing. So I made like 20 videos or more. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. And then I go to look at the app and I'm like that's not really what people are doing <laughs> that's not exactly what this app is for I guess and um, so then I got a little bit insecure like well I'm a little bit embarrassed now <laughs> but <clears throat> at the end of the day I had so much fun until I realized like when I looked at the other videos and then I felt insecure. But when I was just doing my thing and didn't care, I was like, this is a blast. And then I started to worry about what other people thought, you know, or look at, compare. Oh, wow, there are these good videos people are making and I'm just literally turning on my camera singing next song. To, like I was having a blast. I was doing like a, a karaoke marathon. I thought, oh, this is wonderful. And, um, and then I said, you know what? Okay, so if I decide to do it again, I'm just going to do it because I want to do it. Not for views. Not because that what, that's what the app is for or whatever. Just because I find it to be fun. And that's what you should do, you know? And a lot of people don't want to post things because they're worried about views. And like I said, you know, it does get a little frustrating after a while. It's in the more the negativity than anything else. If we were just not right, getting views, it's like, oh, well. Yeah, but it's, like, it's the negativity that it gets a little old. But People get tired of all this fucking... Uh, negativity out there, you see. Mm -hmm. But don't you know? You but don't be scared to not to post things because of negativity. Because it's better to put yourself out there. It feels better. It always feels better to get to express yourself, even if you're getting hate. Um, because coiling up on the inside is way worse, and um, you're going to end up getting depressed. So even if you're putting yourself out there and it's just nonstop hate. Um, at least you get to have the self-expressions, and that's really important. And that's what social media is good for. Um, we were talking about that. It's funny because back in the day, people used to watch movies or TV shows more, and they still do. But for the majority, a lot of people now want to be interactive. They want to create their own stuff. They want to be making their own videos. That's what TikTok people are doing their videos at home. They want to be the star. And um, social media has allowed for that. Um, but what happens is a lot of, I was speaking about this, is a lot of the apps, whenever something can, when you can make money on it, scams start. What, and what that's the, what happens. So it's like, what, the unfortunate thing is the fact that money can be made kind of ruined the art. Well, you also, here's the thing. Social media exists only for this generation because their parents, their dad specifically, divorced their mother and left and neglected them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, everyone, men and women included, go on social media looking for... They want Affirmations. They, they, they were raised by the Me Too generation. Now they're the Me Do. It's like, look, Dad, look at Me Do Yeah, this. what happened so is... Everybody wants hearts mm -hmm. from their dad, but, they're, but really they're getting... And, so, and then you start doing... If you do that... Your art looks like shit. Right. So, like, what he's talking about is, like, um, the Me Too generation. Um, <laughs> that's what he calls it. But that's, um, like, my dad's gen, the uh, baby boomers, I think they call them. They were very, very greedy. Um, I don't know about maybe your parents don't fall into that category, but um, my mom didn't, but she died. <laughs> which I guess you could call her kind of greedy, the fact she killed herself in the sense of, like, it was pretty selfish. <laughs> I was only 20 years old, so I guess she's kind of part of that, where they think about themselves is the point. They don't think about their children. It's, like, all about them. And my dad, I barely talk to him because he don't really give two shits. He doesn't even... I, I hadn't talked to him for seven years, and I talked to him just 
last year. And then this year, I contacted him after, after the Vegas shutdown because the Vegas shutdown happened a week before my birthday. And I haven't had a birthday gift from my dad in um, seven years or talk to him, obviously, any kind of thing. So the Vegas shutdown happened, so I said, hey, dad, is there any way this year maybe you could help me out a little bit because the and maybe uh, get me a birthday gift of, of money. <laughs> that would be really great right now. Um, and at first he ignored me for a couple of days because that's just what he does. And then he finally responded and he said, um, they gave me $500, which was nice, but that was like seven years of birthdays. <laughs> and then he said, don't ever ask again. <laughs> um, I was like, basically. <laughs> So I, I messaged him yesterday to ask him about my Native American grandma, because we have a Native American, um, my great great grandma, and um, I want to know more about her because I never learned uh, as a child. And they, no one told me anything about her. Um, and I don't know her name even. I don't know what tribe it is. No one spoke about it because my my grandfather was racist so they didn't speak about that so then as so then we didn't get to hear about anything so I messaged my dad asking him and no response so I don't know if you guys have a dad like I do but a lot of people do because they're they had the dad that left or my dad left you know and um so what they're they have daddy issues at the bottom or they have mommy issues maybe they had a crappy mom I had a good mom till she killed herself <laughs> She was a really good mom until she got depressed. But um, anyways, um, it's, it's hard to say she was a good mom when she killed herself. So that's people right, like, that's here's, a contradiction. Here's the reason why probably, okay. Racism is, is a word that is used. Well, let's just define it here. Racism means that you will choose that person's product over that person's product because you know the owner believes this and the owner believes that. Right. And we, as Jedi do not have children. We've only been married once to each other. Mm -hmm. That makes us elite in the society when it comes to marriage and monogamy. Everyone else here has had multiple wives and multiple children. I don't know anybody that doesn't have kids. That's why a lot of these people don't understand us or don't like us. So the people that are here, you're catching on to the next gen. The next gen, I don't think, wants to have kids either. Right. Yeah. Okay, so my generation, yeah, that's what he's saying. They we really had kids, like, young. Like, most of my friends had kids because they were very religious. It, I went through the time that it was very religious because, um, especially after 9-11, we went through this very religious phase, very patriotic and religious. I was in the military. Most of, I grew up Christian, and, you know, it was a very— uh, everyone kind of was all about— going to church and stuff and all about and not having sex there was that whole true love waits moment movement i don't know if you guys heard about this and i was part of that i got the rings and stuff where you're supposed to wait till marriage to have sex and all this nonsense um well so then most of my friends decided since they had to wait till marriage they decided to get married really young like justin bieber and Haley, which that's retarded because most of them already had sex and then they decided to redo their virginity or what people do so they waited till they got married but then all that did was made them get married within like two weeks and that's my mom did a similar thing she was gonna wait for her second marriage so they got married in two weeks so then all these people rush into these marriages because they want to have sex when they should just be having sex it's absolutely ridiculous to wait till marriage to have sex absolutely against nature Absolutely. It makes no sense for one thing to not make sure you're sexually compatible with the person you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. It makes no fucking sense because not everyone is socially compatible. Uh, sexually, sorry. Sexually and socially. Sexually compatible. Some people, it just doesn't work. And you don't find that out. You thought it was like going to be good if you've dated and stuff, and you're like, man, this is just going to be great. And then it just didn't fucking click when you all had sex or just tried to make it work longer and people when they got married so young did not have the chance to experience that so both me and Jared Rich waited a little longer he waited till he was how old were you now I can't remember 45 I can't remember, I can't remember. I think he was 45 when we got married um I always forget these dates and then I was 26 I think <laughs> I don't remember but that was older for most of the people my gen like all my friends were all married by the time I got married um like they got married at like 
20, 21, 22. I went to all their weddings, and I was, like, the last one to get married. And they th- that was because my mom, I was all a wreck, too. I was, like, party girl. Um, no one thought I'd get married. <laughs> but now I think the younger gen is realizing you don't have to get married. Most of them are still at home, so they're not getting married. Most of them still live at home you know, into their 20s, 30s even. So they're not getting married. They're still sucking on their mom's tip, basically. Um <laughs> It's weird now. We have so many people. I know it's because they can't afford to move out for the most part, but we have so many people that are just so... This family thing has gotten a little bit extreme. This family unit thing of, like, let's do everything together and live together for the rest of our lives. Um, Man, that's tough. You might have a cool family and like that, but not everyone does. So this concept that because it's your family, you got to stick with them. I don't like my family, so I don't see them. It's the bottom line. You can call me a bitch, and they do, uh, but I don't like them. So I don't take the time to see them. I once in a while text them if I feel like it, but I don't like them. Uh, they make well, me mad. They're I don't like yeah. hanging out with them. Yeah, so why? I choose my friends to, that I want to hang out with and the people I love. Uh, you're, you didn't get to choose your family, so why do you force yourself to hang out with them, especially extended relatives. This concept of you gotta hang out with grandma and grandma when they're nasty as shit. My grandpa is the most racist guy. He still says the N word in 2020 if he's still alive. I don't know, I haven't seen him. But that is so wrong. I mean, my goodness. The guy in public, in public, you guys, with black people around, he will call them that. The guy is out of control. I don't want anything to do with him, okay? And because he's my grandpa, Get the fuck out of here. I ain't gonna associate with that fucker. He doesn't tip either. The guy, oh, it's so embarrassing as kids. And he go to the same restaurant. They're probably spitting in our food like crazy. The guy's such an asshole. This is my dad's dad. And these are the fuckers that are dying from the coronavirus. Good. I hope it killed my grandpa. He's an asshole. He's a racist motherfucker. He is nasty as shit. He's never said anything nice to anyone in the family. And then people go, oh, oh, you better be nice to grandpa. I was in so much need. My mom had died. My brother had died. My dad wouldn't help me out. So much. I asked my grandpa if I could have a, um, I had a, a job. I just didn't have n- the means c- to get a place. So I needed to get a little loan to get, you know, so you give your first lesson, pause it. And my dad was being a dick. Um, and my grandpa said no he has so much money my grandpa's really rich and he wouldn't even give me a thousand dollars as a loan and I could have totally paid him back I've always paid back loans I ended up getting it from my sister and paid her back and uh he said no he's like sitting on uh, thousands of dollars in quarters the guy collects state quarters he's got like twenty thousand dollars just in fucking state quarters He's got so much money, and he's such an asshole. And that's how a lot of the sin was. So we were talking about that was the greedy gen. So the next gen is looking for affirmation because they didn't get it from grandpa or dad or mom. Um, I said fuck you to all of them, so now I don't really care. But it would be nice if people would um, just appreciate the art we make. I, it's not because I need to please daddy because I told my dad to well, go fuck can't. himself. The thing is, is what you're describing is the our gen or people are our age. They're too depressed. They're too far gone. They've already had kids. They don't want to hear about your good times because they're they're on a boat that looks very different than yours. The only people that have a chance are people that aren't married or have kids. Right. Well, and you can still have a chance if you have kids, but you got to realize, and like... It's pretty hard to find well, here's the thing. all your possessions if you have kids. Well, no, that, yeah, that part. No, but I'm saying but you can still have it. And you're acting like that. they but can yeah, still have it. My point is, a lot of their dishappiness and fatness comes from the fact that they're st- so greedy and they have all this shit yes. for their kids. Yeah, people hoard and they're worried about for their children. They want to hoard oh, over the next gen, for the next gen, Once for the next again, gen. Man, they'll figure it out. Yeah, but they, for one thing, I got nothing from my family. When my mom died, she owed money. <laughs> and my stepdad sold the house and gave us $2,000. Um, and then me and my sister. Um, and then when my... Well, my brother was young, so I didn't. But um, then when my grandma died, my great-grandma, one of them, she was very wealthy. And my dad got a bunch of money. He also gave us $2,000. And he siphoned it out. He didn't want to give it to us all. He'd be like, oh, oh, I'll give you $200 here, $200 here. I mean, so, so the point is, 
I never had shit from my family, and I figured it out. Okay, there's there's things you can do. I went in the military. It was one thing because my family my couldn't couldn't afford um, uh, college. The reason why it was either financial aid or go in the military. Some of the shit you describe is very very interesting, because see, like the reason why I'm here and you're here, my dad, what got disowned by his family. So he was forced to go out and do his own thing. But my mom was also disowned by her family. And what happened when he did his own thing, instead of listening to his parents, he got offered a job, not a job, a partnership with Phil Knight to to start up Nike. Yeah, Nike. His dad was a part of the original Nike. He would have been the second. um, It would have been him and his dad and the guy that did Nike. But he did it. You know why? Because he had a child. Because he had Jerry. You can't pay. You can't pay employees when you have no money with money. You pay them with shares of the company. You have to work for free, as we are. Now, if you have a kid, you can't do that, and that's what we're trying to share with you. That if you choose a kid, as everyone else has, you missed out on all the opportunities. Out there. Right, and and that's the unfortunate thing. Everyone wanted to have kids. Like people, it's one thing if you. I don't know. I don't if know. You're a breeder. If, if you're a breeder, but everyone just decided to have kids because it seemed like the Nothing thing to do. to do. Like they were bored. I have a lot of friends that just were like, "Oh, we were gonna get a divorce, so we decided to try and having another kid." You're like, "Why would you do that? It's a terrible idea." Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah. That, so interesting. So Jedi Rich is from Portland, Oregon, and his dad would have been one of the founders of Nike, but he decided not to. His dad did a lot of stuff like that. The where point he, being, he, he was the, a funny guy like my that. My point being, you're all so afraid to, to let your kids go. You want to fucking coddle them. All, they're living at home at age 30. The point is, is that parents that cut their children off usually have children that grow up to be Elvis Presley, like my dad, like you know other people that do amazing things. Yeah. The ones who coddle their kids up until their 30s and keep giving them money those kids don't do shit and usually end up kind of being miserable and depressed. And so what we're saying is, hey, man, think differently. I'm going to go Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, J.I. Rich's dad, he, he was pretty cool. He was an accountant, and um, he also is one of the people that created... Um, what do you call that? Uh, the uh, electronic debt electronic, debt. Debt. electronic payments and it's electronic banking. payments. Why online we banking. have why we have online banking? Jerry Rich's dad. Well, no, online banking was me. He was the credit card piece. Oh, he was the credit. They were the Jerry Rich is one of the guys that convinced all of the banks to do online banking back in the day. So his family it was huge in banking, um, and uh, he used to have a lot of money. You guys look at him now. Whatever. No, he had a lot of money. His family had a lot of money, um, and. They still have things, you know, that are very valuable. Like his mother has a very cool, badass some, car and well, stuff. But, stuff. But most of the stuff they kind of just said, forget it, because they're not really about the money. Well, we have something more valuable than money. <coughs> the ability to make money. Yeah. They've all, so his dad did. just always kind of would have these opportunities come. And, you know, some of them he jump on, some of them not. Uh, Jai Rich is one of the original uh, uh, stockholders for Netflix. That's right. By then he sold it. Was it. the first one. I was, <laughs> was, I was one of the, I had. And he sold it when he thought he got a good deal. You know, I did the math like two years ago. I probably would be, that, that, that $4,000 investment would be worth about four and a half million today. Yeah, he, but see, we never, that's the thing, as Jedi, you don't really care about money, so it's like, who cares? I just like to be, I just like to know that I could have done it. Yeah, and so that's always how Jerry's dad was. Um, he would, um, he didn't care if it was like, like he didn't, he never regrets that he didn't work well, for just Nike. He just was like, what happened to that money it. is that I ended up um, living in motels for 10 years and doing a bunch of drug research. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> In case y'all want. Okay, bye, Ma. I gotta go. Okay. So yeah, yeah, but we um, when I met Jai Rich, he actually um, had he owned a market um, at the condo building that he lived at. He owned a condo in the um, the store below, like it was called Tallers because our last name is Light Taller, and it was a really awesome market. And then they also owned a hardware store, and they sold Traegers. They were the one of the top Traeger um, retailers until they started going to China. And that's when business tank they started uh, making all the trigger, uh, um, you know those trigger uh, pellet stoves that make the best meat. Um, we still have some uh, Jerry's moms. They have a couple of those pellet stoves left, uh, the triggers. But those are really expensive. Those are like like 
they well they were and then they sold them to China and so they started making the parts in China and stuff and so now they're pretty cheap but the, back in the day they were like seven hundred nine hundred twelve hundred dollars for these pellet stoves so um, yeah Jer <coughs> excuse me so we're not about money um, and we also are not about like oh we lost uh, money or so that you know it's like no we lived our life. So we don't care. We, we live day to day. Um, as long as we have what we need for the day, then we're happy. And we could make more money by doing jobs that obviously pay more. But we don't want to. We would rather make less money and enjoy ourselves. So when Jedi Rich was making so much money, he was not happy. You know, he was just working all the time. You know, it was just crazy. So then um, we spent a couple years of just partying. <laughs> we said, fuck it. Um, especially after, you know, uh, Jedi Rich's dad died too. And that's what, um, when everything kind of tanked with the businesses. And then they had to sell, they had several houses and several businesses. They had to sell everything. Um, and that's when we went to Panama. And so we sold, the uh, the last thing that we sold was the website. And we got um, $50,000 for the website. And so we went to Panama and we just enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> for, we lived in Panama for a year and we just partied. We were such partiers. And, um, and then we came back to Vegas and then we kind of took life a little more seriously, but not much more. We just enjoy ourselves. We just smoke weed now. But people go, oh my gosh. What? We don't have kids. We enjoy ourselves. So that was Jairus's point. As most people made decisions very early on, and I get you can't take back if you have kids. But you can make decisions that can better your life and your kids by making freedom. So you do not want to have your kids make the same bad decisions you did in the sense of not giving yourself an option for decisions. Does that make sense? Like... There isn't only one option. Of, there isn't just getting married and having kids. Our society likes to think that's the only option. There's not. There's other options out there, but we never talk about those. And the young generation should know about that. And we're seeing that more with social media now. I mean, they're seeing that they can have other outlets. Social media, you can get paid. And like I was saying, it's great that you can get paid on social media, but it also creates a lot of nonsense because as soon as you can make money somewhere, you start to have people that are greedy and take advantage of the system. So, um, And you have people that have daddy and mommy issues so they need the affirmations of views even if they're buying them it's like they want other people to like think they're so good i see these people that buy their views and stuff and i'm like does that make you feel better when you had to buy them i mean it's like i get it what they do is that some of them buy them and then you hope that you'll get more views but a lot of them are just buying them because they're they get insecure if they don't get the views you know it gets this system like i said it's with youtube they make you sign up for like a daily allotment of money i couldn't believe it i thought <laughs> no way mm -mm. not that we could ever afford that but my goodness um <laughs> you i don't sign up for monthly things at all that and a daily thing <sighs> if we ever sign up for something like when we sign up for like a you know one of the netflix or something with netflix i think we continued in fact, now we now we have Netflix. So Jairus was one of the original. Before it was big, it was he. Um, he used to be a um, what do you call that? Where he just traded stocks and stuff. Day trader. Thank you. He was a day trader in New York City, and so he invested in a ton of amazing stocks. This was back, you know, in the nineties and um, nineties and early two thousand, I think. And uh, one of them was Netflix, but we we don't. We only say it because it's funny. We don't sit there like, oh, man, we are. But Jerry Rich's mother has a tendency to still do that because her, her father did the same thing. So Jerry Rich's father lost like a million in the stock market, and she still brings that up. I mean, he died, and she's still telling me, oh, he lost a million dollars in the stock market. I'm like, yeah, but he also like gave you an amazing life. I mean, they had like so many nice things. And she's like, mm -hmm. Some people just want to look at the negative. She still has so many nice things. She has, I mean... It's unfortunate because um, right now, like, her house is kind of in, like, where she, the short clothes, short sale kind of thing. But she still has a lot of things. She just doesn't want to, like, go of anything. You know, that gen are kind of hoarders. So they just hoard, hoard, hoard. And things end up getting ruined when you would have been better off selling the thing. Like, because there'll be something valuable. This is what that gen will do. They'll have something valuable. And they won't want to get rid of it because they won't get the amount they want. Because they think of the amount they paid for it. Oh, I paid this amount and I want it. You know, this is what my grandparents do too. And then 
they hoard it till it becomes not so great. You know, and some things as they get older become better, but if you don't take care of them. So it's funny that that Jen will just hoard crap and you have storage fulls of crap. They'll pay to house their crap. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, if, if you just sold all your stuff, you probably have enough money to, you know, but that Jen does not do that. They do not want to let go of anything. My grandpa builds sheds just to house more crap. So they're like on five acres up in Washington, my racist grandpa the asshole and um he just builds sheds in his backyard when he can, when the house gets too full of crap <laughs> so I, I don't know once he runs out of acreage <laughs> that'll maybe stop him i don't know no he'll probably build up yeah he already has built up they have um he built um an apartment thing on there <laughs> i have some weird grandparents so i don't i don't talk to them i think they're awful people so i don't understand why people have awful relatives and then they still hang out oh we just have to put up with this racist nasty prick no you don't you don't have to hang out with them just because of your grandpa Mm -mm. i won't hang out with my grandpa no way that guy's an asshole um i also uh didn't go to funerals of loved ones i wouldn't say they weren't my loved ones obviously of um family members that died if i didn't like them I had a great grandpa that died. He, this would be my grandpa's grandpa. Though. He, so he more racist than my grandpa. He died when I was seven. And my dad said, do you want to go? I said, no. I was seven years old. And I said, no, he's mean. I don't want to go. Fuck that guy. I didn't say fuck a little kid. But I was like, no. Why would I go to a funeral with someone I didn't like? I never understood that. I hate when people go to funerals when they don't like them. And they get up and they say shit. I hate that. I've been to two serious ones. I was my mom and my brothers. And I hated them. I absolutely hate it. Because everyone gets up and acts like they're best of friends with this person. When you knew they didn't like them when they were alive. And then they'll say stuff that's not true. Especially when the person's an asshole that died. And then everyone went and sugarcoats the Oh, they were so wonderful no they were not wonderful they were not wonderful just because they died did not make them a wonderful person they were a nasty individual while they were alive and they are nasty now when they're dead and maybe in the next life they'll have some clarity and when they start to channel then they can start to be nice and that's what's happened with my dead relatives i can channel them now and they're starting to come around but they were nasty for a long time because they die and they're nasty and in the next life they're nasty until they figure out that they were nasty you gotta wake up, and hopefully you'll wake up before you die. But yeah, it's it's interesting that our society we're we're supposed to respect someone just because they're older. Age does not make you a better human being or a more respected human being. I know young people that I respect way more than some fucking old farts. Age means nothing about respect. I respect someone that earned my respect. And you'll have it right away. You'd have to lose it for me to not respect you because I respect everyone. But if you lost my respect, I ain't giving it to you just because you're old or because you hold some position. I don't care. I got my Twitter taken down for telling Governor Sista to go fuck himself and to go kill himself. I didn't care, because that's how I felt. And I still think the fucker should kill himself. And I might get taken down again, because I don't think anyone should kill him. I am not inciting violence or threats or anything. I'm saying he personally should feel so bad for what he did, because this is absolutely awful. What he did to Nevadans, people are already homeless. I heard from a client, I'm able to see some locals, luckily, that he went down the strip the other day and there's already just so many homeless because people that weren't homeless before, not the regular. Now these are people, new homeless people with families. He was starting to like, uh, in places now. And, um, just uh, crime is already starting to happen now because people are running out of money. He says it's very unsafe in certain areas. This is all because of Governor Sisolak. Shutting down because people have no money here now. 
They took down all of the livelihood here, except for basically construction and healthcare and grocery stores. But Vegas has so many people now that are going to be homeless, and so they can't be evicted. Oh yeah, you, you see how that is around here. They will come with their security and evict you in some places, or they take out all your appliances, is what I heard from some places, or they lock you out, and what are you going to do? Call the authorities? Okay, great. Not every cop's going to come to every person that gets kicked out of their place. It's just not happening. Um, so, yeah, they can make the thing saying you can't evict people, but who are you going to take it up with? There's no court system open, and the cops can only respond to so many things. So if your landlord kicks you out on the curb, you can say, Trump said you can't do this. To the ends there, they don't care. They're kicking people out. They're locking them out. They're locking them out of their businesses. You know, these businesses that they're they're getting all of their stuff are getting put on the front of their stores, and they're locking them out. Yeah, this is happening. That happened to Jai Rich um, in uh, uh, in Portland when his business started to go down because uh, it was during the 2008 economy tank is when his business went down and he owed some money to the guys um, that he was leasing the, the, the building from. And they came in and they locked him out. They re-locked the things and they would not, uh, they, they were going to steal all of his stuff because um, it, it was all of his stuff that he owned. They said, until you, you, you know, pay us, we're just going to hold all of your stuff as collateral. That's another thing that some of them are doing. They hold all of your business stuff as collateral, which is illegal. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's someone's... Um, once you have been uh, paying, just because they you owe them rent, they can't steal your belongings. That's not allowed. And that's what these people do. So that happened to Jai Rich, and he got some guy to come break the lock and went and got his stuff because these people... Um, you know, he got some locksmith. He knew a guy come in. They got all their stuff out of there. And he can't hold my stuff. It's good. You know, I mean, it's not. That's illegal. But that's what people are doing here in Vegas. And they, and they won't let the people have their stuff. Um, and you say, oh, well, you know, will they open? Well, it's not these people's fault that they owe payment. It's because Governor says, like, shut down and wouldn't allow them to. So how is that fair? These people were good citizens doing their thing, running their businesses, always paying their bills, always paying their taxes. A lot of these things. Some of them maybe not, but I'm saying a lot of them were. And then now Governor says, like, shuts down everything for a regular flu virus. And now they get all their shit taken or, you know, get uh, harassed and threatened by their landlords and leaders and stuff all for and it's not their fault that's not fair that is not right that is not American what is going on here America was about freedoms and starting small businesses and being able to do these things not have the government come in and shut down your livelihoods like this that wasn't supposed to be America that's other countries where they have stricter rules where there's dictators coming in that wasn't supposed to be America what is going on here? And you say, oh, they were doing it for our health for this flu virus. Oh, really? So they allowed construction because they were so worried about our health? Get out of here if you're still thinking the government cares about your health. For one thing, they allow cigarettes. They allow alcohol. They allow all of this crappy food. They do not care about your health. Those are all legal things that they know are horrible for you. So tell me the government cares about your health when they allow cigarettes. Oh, they put a little warning on them. They know kids are getting them. They know everyone is dying from them. They could just make them illegal like they do other drugs. Why are cigarettes legal? They kill people like crazy. You say, oh, oh yeah, weed's legal, illegal. Weed should be illegal because, oh, this, why are cigarettes legal? If you ever say weed should be illegal, then you should make cigarettes illegal. But for one thing, weed is beneficial. Weed is medicinal. Weed heals you. Cigarettes kill you. But people will relate them only because it's a smoking aspect. They'll say you smoke, and they look similar if you're actually smoking a joint. But they are not similar in any other way. Cigarettes are completely harmful, and the government knows that. And they still make them legal. Marijuana, they know, is beneficial now because as 
what is it, 33 states or more now we have? I think it's 33. Made it legal, and they're finding so much research from real doctors, real research of how beneficial it is, and it's medically, they even had to allow it to still be open because medically, I have a medical marijuana card. I went to a medical doctor to get my marijuana card, and he was a real doctor, you guys. So when I was talking yesterday about these doctors, if they think weed is still bad, then I would reevaluate what kind of doctor you are seeing because weed is one of the most amazing things. It's from nature. It's a plant. How could you make that illegal and make cigarettes and alcohol legal? Tell me again your government cares about your health. I see people take off their fast ma- face mask and face shields. The face shields is the new one. I thought, oh, I've seen it all. I've really seen an elephant fly now. These guys got fucking face masks now. Not, no, I mean fa- face shields with their face masks. We got fucking hockey players going in the fucking store now. Absolutely insane. For a flu virus, I saw this couple. I thought... I said, please tell me, please tell me they work here and this is a requirement because I see them walking up with their face shields and they're going to hockey. I mean, goalies. And I said, please tell me this is just a new requirement and this is not someone choosing to do this. The guy comes. I said, okay. He comes, gets behind the line. Oh, no. Out comes the lady. A couple. With, I, I said, oh, jeez. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I thought, all you're doing is just telling the world that you listen to fake news and that you believe everything that the media tells you when you wear that face mask and, God forbid, that fucking face shield. If you, any of you put that goddamn thing on, I want to punch you out myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not violent. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I've never punched someone. I think that would hurt my hand too much. I'd be like, man, I hurt my hand punching you. Actually, I did hit Jared Rich pretty hard one time in Panama. <laughs> He's like, God damn, you can hit. And one time I hit him with the binoculars. <laughs> Cocked him on the side of the head. I was drunk. <laughs> we had a pair of binoculars and I was mad. I don't even know. I was messed. And they were heavy. I hit him so hard on the side of the head. He like, knocked over man I was like whoa <laughs> well, that was about I had a lot of um, uh, uh, repression and pent up stuff for so many years of being a Christian and not allowing myself to express myself so when I drank it would just <laughs> barrel out now I don't have that kind of anger because I've allowed myself to express it now you guys will hear me get angry but that's very controlled it's not out of I am angry but I am not it's not uncontrollable does that make sense like in the past when I would hit or something or lash out that I couldn't control I was so angry that now I'm like if I get mad and show I'm like I can in a second bring it back down does that mean you know what I mean because but I am angry but it's 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 not this uncontrollable rage and a lot of people get this uncontrollable rage and me and Jai Rich had to we went through that in Panama and we experienced that on each other we we raged on each other and then we got over it and then we're like okay (laughs) now we can breathe and that's a lot of people don't want to do that because they don't want to fight we still fight (laughs) we have big fights you know and then I get mad for about maybe sometimes it'll be about an hour or two if I'm real mad I'll just suck. And then I'll be like, and then I just start laughing. <laughs> there comes a point where I just start laughing. The biggest fight, I'll just start laughing. I'm like, really? Because there's no way we're ever breaking up. That's what we were talking about before is we waited to get married. And I get 26 and not that old. But I had so many things occur in my life. I had been in the military. My mother had killed herself. My brother had died. I'd been homeless. My dad had kicked me out. I'd had bulimia and alcoholism. I had been through a lot. Um in 26 years so I was very like I had seen the world (laughs) I guess you would say so I knew it was what I wanted to do at that point um and I I, definitely we did not wait till marriage to have sex (laughs) we actually were funny enough we actually were doing pills when we got married we it was the like I said we did pills for about two months and it happened to be during the time we got married which 
those are not that much fun. I don't know why people do those. I think they just get addicted. It was because uh, Jared had gotten uh, dental stuff done and he had Vicodin, and then we were like, I was like, well, I want to try because back in the day I would do anything if there was like a pill. Who give me that? Let me try. I seriously would try anything. Now I, I will not. I will not take a pill to, to save my life. I know that's a funny expression, but seriously, I only do weed. You cannot give me medicine. I would refuse medicine. I won't even put that stupid hand, hand sanitizer because that takes off all my good bacteria. You guys can fuck yourselves with your hand sanitizer because all that does is take all your good bacteria off your hands. Now, I am very clean. I wash dishes all day long, so I'll get that soap on my hands, but I ain't put in all that extra antibacterial and take all the good bacteria off, and that's why I stay healthy. Um, um, I do not wash my hands every two seconds with soap. I, if anything, I wash them under water. Yeah, I'm a good cleaning and wipe them off, you know. But I'm not going to put soap and take off all the good bacteria all day long. It's a terrible idea. For one thing, bacteria is not what causes viruses. They're different things. And antibiotics cure bacteria. They don't cure viruses. Viruses, the only way to cure viruses is to get the virus and do recover from it and that's what a flu shot is they give you part of the virus and then you that's why sometimes you get sick when you get a flu virus not everyone does get sick but they still are giving you the flu virus but some people uh, immunity is so good that when they get the flu shot it, they don't get sick but they did get the virus and so now they have an immunity but other people just getting the shot will make them sick um but that's what they're going to do with this coronavirus. They're just going to have a flu shot. That's what they do every year, you guys. And all we did was track a regular flu virus. And we blew it out of proportion, created this mass hysteria, shut down all of Las Vegas. For what? So, uh, uh, back to, I think I didn't finish, why it's important right now for the Democrats to get a Democrat in office is because right now Congress is a majority Republican. Like, they have more uh, Republican um, people in Congress than Democrats. So when they, uh, you know, have laws, it'll sway Republican right now. Well, right now the Supreme Court, I think, is uh, equal, but if... A Supreme Court judge dies, then um, the next judge that's appointed could sway one way or the other. So if like if it's a Democratic, then that could help sway one. But if it becomes another Republican, then they're going to sway Republicans. So then you have Congress and Supreme Court will now sway Republican for every law, which the Republican laws are things like no abortion and stuff and some laws we don't want to happen um, you guys might but I don't want that I think it's ridiculous you should be able to have an abortion I had one yes I had an abortion and I'm glad it was legal because I'm glad I don't have a kid right now so yeah I did make a choice I made a choice to not have a child because it was not the time to have a child for me I was bulimic I was a drunk I was homeless um, like basically like it wasn't like people think homeless like on the street it was like no I didn't have a place to live I just like would hang out with people whoever I could find that night usually someone from a bar and um, I usually usually people I knew because I knew people but I'd be like hey can I come to your place because I either slept in my car or I stayed at someone's house and um, I would try to get a shower before I was working too I had a job but I didn't have a place so I would have to I would keep my clothes in my car and I would try to find some there would always be usually someone I could call to say hey can I come take a shower to get ready for work because I knew enough people usually someone or if I'd stay the night at someone's place they'd let me shower in the morning but this went on for a good good several months um, and um, I was even working for these doctors during the time, and I um, a couple of times I slept at the clinic. Um, I did my laundry at the clinic because we had a washer and dryer at the clinic. Um, and I mean, I was making good money, but I had I was bulimic, so I was spending all of my money on food, and I had gotten myself in such a financial bind on food and alcohol. It seems crazy, but that's well, I was so addicted that I would just over consume and especially when I drank it'd get out of control so then I would just spend too much and then the next day you'd realize you overdrafted your account or something and it would just be day in and day out because I'd be drunk and spend too much and it, so I was always getting in financial um, situations and then my dad kicked me out because I was bulimic they didn't uh, want me to throw up so they said if you throw up in our house then we'll kick you out and since I couldn't not throw up because I was so bad then um I got kicked out. <laughs> 
couple times. They brought me back and said, if you don't throw up, I'm like, well, I throw up. So I don't know. Okay, I'll try and hide it. And then they kicked me out again. So they kicked me out like three times. This is all after my mom died. You know, before that, I was a stable person. <laughs> but I did have bulimia. But I had it uh, stably where a lot of people have. And then when my mom died, I just went off the rails. So, um, and uh, the point is, um, the I don't remember how I got on, I, I forget where I sidetracked, but oh, uh, oh, abortion. <laughs> so I ended up getting pregnant while I didn't have a place to live. I it was in so much debt. Um, I didn't even have a bank account anymore. Um, like I would just get my uh, work. I, they would give me a check and I'd have to go cash it somewhere because um, I, I didn't have a bank. They had blackballed me from banks um, because I overdrafted too many times. And then, um, so I still can't have a bank. I have it through Jared's. They don't allow me. If you overdraft a lot, the banks won't let you come back. Don't matter. They can't go back. It was only over $300, the final overdraft, but I'm blackballed forever from banks. Um, and so I ended up getting pregnant when I was, um, I didn't have a boyfriend. I kind of was on and off with this one guy. And um, I was like, no way am I having this child. I'm bulimic. I'm a drunk. I don't have a place to live. I have a job, but uh, all the money I use for alcohol and food. Um, and so I decided to have an abortion. And I think it's the best decision I ever made. Because if I had had a child during that time, my child would have had the worst existence. Because I was a mess. And it took me up until now to finally get it all. Like where I could now probably have a child. But all these years... <laughs> That would have been a horrible existence for a child, and I wasn't going to put a child through that. So I am very happy that um, abortion is legal. And if the Republicans make things like that illegal, I would be very upset about that for people that are in situations like that. And I think you should have that choice. And I found out right away. Um, I had, uh, went to the uh, VA hospital for a checkup, and... Um, they told me when I was pregnant, so I was only a week pregnant, so I ended up have um, you can't have an abortion until four weeks, so I had to wait. You can't have it the in the beginning. You have to wait four weeks. I don't know if people know that. They go, oh, there are four weeks long. No, you have to wait four weeks. So you wait four weeks, and then you have an abortion. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it was sad. It sucked, <laughs> but I don't regret it. Uh, I was very sad for a long time over it because that sucks to have to do, but I don't regret it because I made the better decision for the child. And so when we have um, all Republicans in office and controlling the Supreme Court and controlling Congress and a Republican president, then anything they want to pass could get passed without the Democrats being able to have any say um, for everything Republican. So it's a big deal that the next president be Democratic if the Democrats want to gain any power back. Because if they lose that Supreme Court judge spot, then it could be a long time before they get power again in Congress or the Supreme Court. Because with Supreme Court, you have to wait for someone to die again and the reason why um th this is why it's about to happen is because um they're thinking uh, that Ginsburg I think her name is probably going to die she's been um struggling with cancer for many years and has been on her deathbed basically on and off you know um like they thought she was going to die several times now and um so they want a democrat in office and they are doing any means to do that and the one means uh was this jumping on an already flu virus. So they already saw that China... So China was the original hoax. This is a, this is what is coming out, um, and you don't just have to take my word for it. This is what they're finding out. They're finding out that China uh, misused the numbers, that they uh, that the numbers are way, like, substantially less than they ever said. They're actually finding out that they just straight up lied. Or just, uh, I don't even know what they just straight up lied, I guess. And so it was a hoax to scare America, which the reason why they did that is because we just did a 25% tax on China, if you guys remember. And we also just bombed uh, Iran, I think it was. So, like, sometimes these things can have, uh, uh, countries can retaliate in other ways. It doesn't have to be with bombs. They can create hysteria. And then we do things like shut down our whole government by our own choice not even by any other government. This was an, uh, a social media attack that we shut down our government without an attack, like from like a terrorist attack. We just did it from, it was a social media attack. 
of like, there's this huge virus. Put on your face masks and face shields and, and don't go to work and be scared of everyone. La la la. When 50,000 people die, which is the regular number that people die from this virus. I'm so tired of fearing 50,000. I'm sorry, it sucks when 50,000 people die, but 50,000 people die every year from the flu virus. And guess what? Millions of people die every year from car accidents and other things. So I don't know why we're focusing on the 50,000 people. I'm sorry if it's your loved one. And like I said, it sucks to lose a loved one. I've lost a mother, a brother, and a child, in a sense, because I had an abortion. That still sucks, even though it was my choice. I didn't have a real good option. It was either have a shitty life for the child or an abortion. So those are choices I make. It sucks when people die. But it doesn't mean we shut down the whole world because someone dies over a flu virus, especially when they were already ill. The people that are dying are the people that are already ill. Ah! He's trying to say 50,000 people died in one month. But that's not true. So whoever is saying that, that is not even true. You can go online and check all the stats. That is not a true fact. That's just the bottom line on that one. It's 50,000 overall in the U.S. There's other numbers in other countries. Uh, I don't know all those numbers, but it's 50,000. Maybe a little more than that. I, I didn't see the numbers, but it's not 50,000 in a month. That is wrong. Yeah, it's going to top out at 60. Yeah, they, they're, they're already talking it's going to top out at 60. Um, but that's over this whole course. It's not in a month. That is absolutely a lie. It is not in a month. I don't know how else to tell you that is not the truth. I mean, go and educate yourselves. Don't listen to me. Go and actually, okay, people go, well, there's lies online. This is how you find out what's true and what's not, is you go and you research a topic, okay? And you first go to, if, if it's something like um, what I did with nutrition, if it's something like sugar or something like gluten, first go and read the scientific stuff about the thing first. So you learn yourself about how it even works, okay? So with this virus, go read about viruses first and read about how many there are deaths a year. Read about that first, like the scientific medical stuff, okay? Then you will have the knowledge to then when you go see nonsense, you already are educated enough to figure out the bullshit. Then you can say that's true and that's not because you educated yourself, don't just educate by someone else's blog that told you, even me. Educate yourself after what I say. Go look up what I said. When I talk about caffeine, I looked it up online. Not from other people. I read about what caffeine does to your body. Read what caffeine does. That's what I read. I don't read what someone else said caffeine does. I read the scientific research. Like You can read medical documents. You can read scientific things. A look at definitions of what things are. Definition of sugar, definition of gluten, definition of dairy. Defin and then when you understand how that thing works in your body, virus, then when you hear things that 50,000 people died in one month from something that is a regular flu virus that people are recovering from, you can know that person is lying, okay? Because you learned yourself about the thing you didn't have to read between the nonsense of where they put these huge massive things of the number of deaths when they have the tiny number down here which is actually the huge number they put it in small print the huge number of people that are recovered and they put the massive big letter the 50,000, and then small print is the hundreds of thousands to millions that have recovered. So educate yourself. Look at all of the numbers. Look at 50,000, but then 500,000 have recovered. And I don't know if that's the number, but I'm saying those are the, the go look at the numbers. Right. Um, and I'm saying educate yourself. Then you say, that is not a deadly virus. That is a virus that more people have recovered. Sorry, you have no clue what you're talking about. That's fine. That's why I said go educate yourself. Because see, what they're doing is they're just re repeating what they see on TV. Yeah, so you aren't educating yourself. You're repeating what the newscaster told you. Now, let me share that. I am uh, telling you what I learned from research. And, well, and what I know about, about viruses. Here you go. 50,000 people from died, research. In, died in one month. Okay, he's freaking out. 2.7 million people die every year 
in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, so that comes out to close to 300,000 people dying. Majority of those people every month. 300,000 people, 300, people die okay. so, so you guys, a month. You know, it's like 300,000 people die. Now, out of those 300,000 people that die anyways, 50,000 of those are going to come out of this COVID virus. Okay, yeah. They're not coming out of the pool that wouldn't have died. Right. So they're it's still going to be 300, the... 300,000 pool. So, it's not so anymore. So when you look at the annual statistics of deaths, when we tally it up at the end Because they year, always put flu viruses in there. It's going to be the same number as any other death because we're taking the 50,000 of the most vulnerable. This one is more specific because if you're a smoker, yeah, man, you could be a fucking, if you're a heavy smoker, you're going to die if you get this virus. It really attacks your respiratory. And that's why they're freaking out. But shit, you knew to stop smoking. Yeah, that's what it says. Stop smoking cigarettes. And smoking weed is not the same. People get this misconception that smoking is the issue. No, it's what you're smoking. Because with cigarettes, there's all kinds of toxins and additives they put in there. And that's what's causing the issues for people. With weed, they don't have that. It, you're just getting the flowers. So. Keep talking so you can see. The, I'm just going to show them a chart. Oh, okay, cool. You're talking about death stats. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. You got one right there. Wait, right, what, so is, what are the numbers say on there? Since yeah, I it's, see it's it. uh, basically the, the number one cause of death is, is heart disease, of course. Uh, and then um, cancer uh, and then respiratory diseases. Okay? So it also affects your uh, accidents. Accidents are also a major cause of death. Every month, 250,000, about 200,000 people die. And this is the breakdown. As you see, heart disease is number one. You can see all that. So, there you go. See, and these numbers of these 50,000 are, are in the regular... Okay, every year 50,000 would die from a flu virus that would be in those numbers. And that's what happened this year. Is it's going to be in those numbers, the same 50,000, or 50, 60, whatever it comes out to. It's going to be around there the same as it is every year. And those are going to be part of that, whatever that big number you said, was it 300,000 or 250,000? Whatever the number was of how many die a year. I forget the number he just said. Um, but... Uh, that's going to be part of that. So all we're doing, this would, okay, you could also, during this time, uh, focus on every other death that we've had. But we don't. We're only focusing on the coronaviruses. But there's been, uh, people are now committing suicide because they've lost their jobs and their livelihood. Um, people are having um, deaths due to, because um, they're overeating, so they're having heart attacks and things because people have been at home so much and been less active and have been overeating, and now it's been like 40 days. So that's a substantial amount of weight you can put on. So we've had um, people dying from heart attacks and things now, not due to this coronavirus, due to, because they are inactive now and they're sitting at home like a couch potato or depressed or sleeping and eating too much, where had they been working, that wouldn't have happened. So you start to have you have people in accidents as they're rushing to Walmart. Um, even though there's less cars on the road, people are driving faster now, if anything, because they're rushing to the store and they don't want to be out. So they're getting in accidents by themselves. Um, I just had a client cancel on me yesterday because he totaled his car. And there's no one on the road. It's just people are driving more reckless. Um, because they're like, oh, no one's around, you know, and oh, I want to get to the Walmart before everyone else gets to the thing I need, I guess the rubbing alcohol. So I, was, I went to Walmart a couple of days ago. I have to go there today. I haven't been there in a while. So this was, gosh, I don't know what day now. I was able to order a bunch of beef on Whole Foods, which has been amazing. But anyways, um, so I have to go today. But last time I went, they had rubbing alcohol, and people were just... Whoosh, and then they were only allowing you to buy two. But um, it was such a mess. And people were standing in line to buy rubbing alcohol and stuff. And then they would just grab, like, barrels of it. And then this uh, the, the self-checkout cashier was just, no, 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 grabbing it from everyone. She just got it like, no, no, no. I was like, oh, this is just a mess. This is just ridiculous. And then I'm just, it's just nasty to see out there the way people are acting. Oh, the couple with the face shield was the ones grabbing all they put their cart full of cleaning supplies and rubbing alcohol and she said no you can only have two per thing they put a cart full of it I couldn't believe it and uh they were so mad but yeah you were only allowed to buy two per thing so like two bleach two rubbing alcohol two whatever they were buying um and they they tried to I was like, I wouldn't know where did all this stuff go when I went to the rubbing alcohol? Because I got there when it opened. I went to the rubbing alcohol by the time I got, because I'd gotten to my beef first. Um, and by the time I got to the rubbing alcohol, there was like two left. I was like, jeez Louise. And then I saw at the, at, and then they were all at, at the end, because the cashier's holding on to them all now, because everyone was trying to grab them and she'd take them out of the carts. I'm like, jeez Louise, what a mess this is. 
Um, and uh, yeah. All right, I think I'm. You're about ready, right? Yeah, okay, yeah I'm pretty done here. Yeah, fun chat with everybody. Yeah, it was fun. So just educate yourself, and then you don't have to listen to anyone because the numbers are out there. Um, like the real numbers. Look at the numbers of deaths, numbers of recoveries, number of yearly deaths exactly. for flu virus. Here's the thing. Number Everyone of all these like, things, and then you'll realize that we overreacted. See, everyone comes in here expecting you to be an expert and to be have all these credentials, and they want you to tell them what to think. Right. And, and they're like, well, who are you? Who are you? You are them. Yeah, I'm saying educate yourself. Yeah, All I did was go and look at the stuff myself. Yeah, man, you guys don't need a TV and some phony doctor. To you also me. don't need um, these newscasters to tell oh, you no, what's going on. They don't on. even know what they're because, talking about. They well, for one thing, they read off a teleprompter. They also they only the the worst. they will only say what um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they will only tell you whatever their sponsors are allowing them to to so they could never tell you something that would be uh, uh, hurtful to their sponsors so that can really affect what someone reports if uh, they're so whoever is paying for the thing you know only allows certain things they're only allowed to talk about certain things they're never allowed to bash certain things if that would not be beneficial to their sponsors so you always have totally biased news even though it's supposed to be unbiased and, and each channel tends to lean a certain way you'll find out really easy some of them are obvious like cnn is clearly democratic fox news is clearly republican they even do all red and cnn does all blue um, cause, and they say they're, uh, that they're unbiased, but they clearly lean one political way. So that would make you bias because they're always going to sway all of the articles to their agenda. So really, really take it with a grain of salt, whatever you hear on TV. Someone yesterday said, I should watch TV. And I say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You should not watch TV. You can watch movies, movies and like Maybe some, like, TV shows on apps, but if you're sitting there and you're just watching, like, TV, like, regular mainstream on cable with the news and that nonsense, you are just giving yourself brainwashing because it's, for one thing, it's all they're doing is trying to sell you stuff all the time, too. I don't understand. Like, the news has just become, like, look at this new product that we're going to promote and act like we use for ourselves, but really someone just paid for us to talk about it. Anything on, um, if they ever talk about a product that's sponsored content, you're not even allowed to talk about stuff usually until you get permission of a lot of the things. So if they're ever saying, oh, check out this new little thing, they usually had to get permission to even have that on their show. So that's sponsored content. That company is paying them to promote their item, whatever it may be. Um, and you'll see that, and they act, they try to slip it in like, oh, this new fad coming out. They're the ones making it a fad because they're putting it on the TV saying it's a fad. And then everyone goes and buys the product. It wasn't a fad till it was on TV, till they said it was. So they said everyone was buying it. And then you go, oh, really? And then you go buy it. No one was buying it till they put it on TV. And then they said everyone was buying it. See, it's just this game. Same with social media. Um, there, social media has come to where a lot of people have been where they're just selling stuff on social media now, too. So you got to watch out for the people that are just trying to, they get paid by whatever product they're promoting. And you see that a lot on Instagram, where um, I guess that's how people get paid on Instagram, is they just have a company have them promote when they have enough followers their thing. So you got to be really careful if someone has a lot of followers on what thing they're promoting. Just know that they're usually being paid for that, and especially at a celebrity level. So some of these celebs get paid like $500,000 to do a tweet to promote something. Like that was, um, remember that one, uh, we watched a documentary where uh, the, uh, Caitlyn Jenner promoted this nonsense, um, it was supposed to be this crazy um, event that they were going to have, um, it was supposed to just be a blast, and it was like this $50,000 event, like you had to pay, and it was gonna, they were going to go for the weekend and stuff, and it was a total sham. All they did was scam all of these rich kids, and they paid Caitlyn Jenner to promote it. She got paid like $250,000 or $500,000 to write the tweet saying, go to this thing, at, what was it called? Uh, Fire Festival. Fire Festival, Fire Island Festival, I think, and it was a sham. They did not uh, provide anything. The people didn't even have a place to stay. They showed up. They paid $50,000 or something like that, and it was a sham. And all because these guys figured out they could just pay Caitlyn Jenner, and they never paid the people back. And it was this whole thing. There was a big documentary on it. 
And that's what, uh, so watch whenever you see a celebrity, they're just being paid to promote whatever item they're promoting, especially like um, Justin Bieber and Drew. Oh my God, that's just his thing is Drew, he's just so a part of that Drew clothing line. It's not like um, he could like it or not, it don't matter. That's just the thing that he that it decided to promote. Um, and whenever you're seeing them promoting a product, um, like if they're wearing it, like uh, Miley Cyrus does a lot of Gucci. She works for Gucci. She's a Gucci model. Like if she's showing that product, it's because they paid her. Very Back in the day, you'd see more celebrities just wearing something because they were wearing it because that was expensive. But now with social media, a lot of them are not even allowed to wear You couldn't, since Miley works for Gucci, she couldn't be wearing another thing on there when, um, like if you see, she's always, uh, Gucci I think is the one she has. Uh, um, she works for she even, <laughs> I wish I was being paid by anyone for a sponsor because that would mean we were <laughs> had some money. No, we we don't get paid for anything actually on social media. We never have. Um, the most we've ever gotten is just some support from other people in the sense of when we lived in the cave, we had people um, donate. donate for our GoFundMe because we were living in a cave and they would give us like five dollars here and there because we were starving and dying out in the cave and entertaining everyone. But that's the only uh, way we've, we've made money on social media. Uh, we do not uh, get paid by any app. Um, most of them, you can't really get paid too much. Like uh, Twitter, I don't know how you get paid on Twitter, Instagram, but like YouTube, you can get paid. But um, you can you have to get a certain amount of followers, and then you are only paid on ones that um, you know don't have music copyrights. So if you ever see where they're using someone else's music you can't be paid on those videos. So those videos are just for fun. That person cannot be paid on that video um, unless they own the rights. And, and and YouTube flags it, so it's it'll say, that's not your song, you're not allowed to be paid. It says uh, it can't be monetized. And it does that before you're ever paid. So like we have all of our videos that we show, like 99% can't be monetized. And we don't even have the option yet to be monetized, but it'll tell you that before. And then by the time monetized means then you could get paid on them. But, um, yeah, it can't even happen when you have music, so that would be, like, most of ours. <laughs> well, well. Um, but some of them, the artists, you can pay the artists. I don't know how that works. We're, like, they'll allow you to use it, and then you, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't been paid yet, so we, if we ever get to that, I'll know more information. Because a lot of the things you don't really know until you get there. Like, I don't know what that's going to look like until we get to that level and then you start to see what you can do. Like, I didn't know people were uh, paying YouTube for their own videos. I thought it was all you put your video up and YouTube pays you. But I come to find out, be, um, the majority of the people pay YouTube X amount of dollars to get the views and then to hope to get more views because you hope if you pay X amount like an investment you know like almost like an ad you're paying for your ads then you're going to get the views just like people do on TV they pay for com for ad space right but I didn't know that's what YouTube was <laughs> so I was a little bit disheartened to find out I was like oh really people are like buying their own views I kind of thought it was like everyone just organically getting the views but yeah, Rachel, well, that's just the way it is. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get a little disheartened sometimes. The same with, I was a little bit disappointed with TikTok yesterday. So I thought, you know, I was just having a blast doing that karaoke. And then I was watching, I was laughing at some people's videos. I was just, I was, and then I realized that everyone just copies everyone. That's just the whole thing is you just do what the last person did, which is kind of funny, but it gets really old really fast because you laughed at the first time you saw the video, but by the hundredth time you saw the same person or someone do the same thing, even if it's a different person, you're like, oh, that's not so funny anymore. So it's interesting. Um, I just love when people are doing what they want to do and being unique and being creative and stuff. But this whole like copying and just doing exactly what everyone else is doing and never being unique, but thinking you're a new unique is just kind of amazing. Like I was hoping that TikTok was like where everyone was just putting out cool videos of like their creative ideas, but if, uh, instead I find that it's you copy everyone else's video and you just try to do the same dance or something. I'm like, oh. That's not really what I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how much I'll do that out, but but I did have fun singing my songs, and I might do that a little bit and just use it as like my karaoke thing, just for me to just get to express myself maybe. But I didn't realize the concept is like you do these challenges and you, 
oh, you did that dance, now I want to see if I can do the dance kind of thing. Up to that end, may have ended my thing. Um, when I get a phone call, that sometimes ends my thing. But, yeah, so, I don't know. I, I just want... Um, <sighs> I want people to just feel free to be themselves. And most people don't feel that way. Most people are so insecure that they only feel okay if they're, for one thing, copying someone else because they don't want to come up with something different because it's scary when you... And like I said, it's, we put our stuff out there that's unique and we get no response. You know, if I copied into the same dance everyone else did and maybe you know tried to improve and then maybe that would get some views but it's like I'm not gonna do that I don't want to do what someone else just did I, I want to do something different so anyways I'm gonna get off here did I read you around is he cops I think he went to feed the birds oh it's pigeon time I hear him you can hear him they're they're so loud so loud if you guys um it, it's interesting as you pay more attention to nature you'll hear it more so if you don't pay attention to nature you won't hear things like birds but once you pay attention then they will wake you up <laughs> you will hear them and you're like oh geez i used to not hear you guys they're so cute they're just they make a ruckus if it's time to eat <laughs> like hello hello guys hello you forget about us we're hungry out here hello 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 they're so sweet i love pigeons i'm obsessed with pigeons so people are like oh flying rats and stuff oh my gosh we just watched last night ghost dog um which we own it's a fantastic movie with for uh, forrest whitaker i love that movie but he loves pigeons in that movie and they kill his pigeons and that's like <laughs> the premise of like what he's like those, I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers because he they um these gangster guys came and killed his pigeons because he's like a um he's kind of like a ninja he's a samurai uh, he he's a um hired killer but these guys come and kill his pigeons and he freaks out it's a really cool movie it's older but anyways um People think that pigeons, that's another uh, misconception, they think that pigeons carry these diseases and stuff, and they think that they carry the bird flu, um, which they don't even have the ability to. Pigeons actually um, don't have the ability to carry these viruses that they think that they do. So they're actually not um, uh, an animal that you can get um, anything from like that, where, where those are just lies. They're, they you, Pigeons are very safe. They're very intelligent. They're not dirty. We have this weird concern because they eat trash. Is why people think they're dirty, but they're just hungry. They're trying to find little snippets anywhere, you know. But they're they're very clean animals. They clean themselves after they do that too. They bathe. And they're so cute. They take little baths. We have some water out out there, and they just they have a little courtyard. It's so cute. They they wash themselves. They're the sweetest in there. Um, they're very loyal. Um, we had a pigeon at our old place that. His partner, pigeons, actually are, uh, they mate for life with, the, you know, the, the same, they don't um, get divorced. <laughs> so they are very attached, and um, the pigeon's mate died by the train. It got run over by train, and we went out there, and the pigeon was in shock. And this was about two years ago, and he was distraught. He would not get off of the train tracks. Uh, he just sat there next to his dead partner. Now, she had been squished by the train. It was the worst thing I'd ever seen. I was bawling, and uh, we had to pick him up. He would not. We would pick him up, and we would move him, and he would walk right back to the train where his partner was, and he just wanted to basically, I guess, die there. He wanted to be hit by the train. He wanted to kill himself, basically, because uh, of his partner had died. And... Um, we ended up, we didn't want to see that happen, so we ended up picking him up and taking him all the way to our place. Um, we didn't take him inside, but we put him out where he wasn't going to go back to the train track. And we fed him and got him some water because he was like, he was like uh, making these weird noises too. He was like hyperventilating in a sense. And uh, we calmed him down um, and uh, held him for hours and hours and hours. Uh, it was the sweetest thing. We got a bunch of pictures this couple years ago. And then he finally was able to kind of recover and go about his way. But he was that distraught by losing his, his, his friend there, his partner. And you guys act like animals um, don't care. Then that's over the, the vegans then argument. Oh, now you can't eat animals. 
you're supposed to eat animals. That's a part of life. Living and dying is a part of life. Just like that pigeon was sad, his loved one died. The pigeon was going to die at some point. Just like I was sad when my mom died, she would have died at some point. Not as early as she did, but people die. So animals do die and it doesn't make sense to not eat animals it's what we're supposed to in nature it's what we would have done they would eat us uh if we didn't have guns now people say it was unfair because we have guns so we made it unfair and we put them in cages yeah that's not cool but it's the way the universe went and we still are supposed to eat animals now the way you can make yourself feel better is by choosing organic options no gmos no steroids no hormones no pesticides um the pasture raised, no cages, you know, all these wonderful things, humane uh, treatment, uh, no cruelty. These are all in the packaging now. The steps, they have steps at Whole Foods. Um, at step five would be your highest level of treatment for the animals. You can choose your meats that have step five. So you can make these choices so you can feel better that the animal was treated fairly. Now, I get there are animals that are treated unfairly, and for that, we're not happy about. But the more that people choose organics, the less animals would be treated unfairly because the reason why they're treated unfairly is because people want cheap, convenient, easy food. And they that puts animals at risk because they have to just... They don't have enough time and money. They've got to make it cheap, you know? And just cram them all in one cage. And, um, and all the chickens are all in one pen, you know? And they don't have any room to move and they're just popping out eggs. And, um, and that's because society wants to have eggs be $2 for a dozen oh my gosh that is ridiculous eggs should be way more than that when we were doing organic eggs they were like seven eight dollars a dozen and people oh gosh that's the price of real eggs eggs should not be two dollars i'm sorry uh, but that's just not the price to take care of chickens and have them have a wonderful life or as a good of life as they could and not be crammed into one thing it's not two dollars a dozen anymore that was in the 70s maybe it was two dollars a dozen so if you want things to stay the super cheap prices, um, then you're going to have unfair treatment. So you make your choices of where you're going to spend your money, and a good place to spend it is on your health, as in what you put in your body, as in your food. Why not put the money there? Everyone wants to spend money on trying to lose weight. Why not put the money in eating the right food so then you will be the weight you want? Spend the money on the organics. It's for your well-being and it's for the animal's well-being. Double whammy. You would have that saying, kill two birds with one stone, but I don't like that saying. I'm like, who came up with that terrible saying? What? I hate some of these sayings you know, that you said and you didn't think them through. You go, oh, that's terrible. No way. Don't do that. I love birds. But it's funny because when I was a kid, I would say things without thinking because you just, you know, it was a saying. But when you thought through what the saying was, I would say a lot of racist things when I was young. Because, like I said, um, not like things like um, the N-word, but things more like um, uh, things like I had heard the term saying, um, when you were being cheap, that someone uh, was jewing you down, something like that, right? And I didn't know that was. I didn't know it meant that because you were Jewish and they were saying Jewish people were cheap. I just thought it was a saying like, ah, don't jew me down. I didn't understand. I didn't understand. I didn't know it meant Jew like Jewish. I just didn't know these things. So I would go around saying things and Jerry Rich would have to say, oh, that's racist. I said, oh, really? Oh. I didn't know that. And I still do that sometimes because I'm not a racist person, but the the terms you could just throw out that maybe you'd heard your parents say, heard relatives say, and maybe they weren't even racist themselves, but they, you know, had just gotten used to a, a term. And when you dissect the word, you go, Phew. I want to say that again. <laughs> so I, I found that out a lot. And there was a lot of things like that from growing up that I didn't even know Um uh, 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 they would call it Alibaba's um, in LA. They'd call it the guys that messed with the, um, the the cars. That if they were junkie, they call them Alibaba cars. Which that's yeah, a racist thing to say. I didn't know that. I didn't. I just find it, I didn't know. That's just what they call it. I thought you know. But I guess that's being very racist. Um, and so 
a lot of times what you got to do is take someone's meaning too. So that's where people want to hold on to words. Oh, you're still on. I, I thought you were getting off. Oh. Well, I was going to get off, but then I'll wait okay. for you. Okay. Did this that one, one die? This one is over. Say bye to everybody. Oh. That one died, I think, a long time ago because of my... Wait, I got a phone oh, call. Oh, shit. That's what's happening. I got a phone call. Okay, when did that happen? A while ago. Okay, well, shoot. Sure. Did you just stand up and go turn it on then? Oh, I didn't know if it ended. That it was every I was going. So why, if I'm not here, that's a good if, thought. I don't know. If, if your phone rings and it turns off the camera, I didn't think about chair, that. I asked you guys, but I didn't think about it, huh? And then go ahead and hit this button here, and then just hit this thing. And well, it goes back down. well, sometimes I think the cameras cut me off because I talk too much. So I think we'll dance next good. time, guys. We'll dance next time. Oh yeah, someone was asking about the dancing, and I was like, "What are you talking about? Are you talking about the Tiesto dancing?" I was thinking, I'm mean, thinking. You like how I talk sometimes? I was thinking. Um, you guys were talking about. I used to dance on Periscope many years ago, and we'd get flagged. I would do my nunchucks. And I would wear my swimsuit, and they didn't like that on Periscope. So I'd get flagged all the time. We'd get taken down. And so then someone... The Like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a roly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out.